case of hot fusion, uh, the apparatus needed is uh, really huge and uh, very complex. Let's contrast this with uh, doing electrolysis in a jar. The uh, tokamak approach to hot fusion. That's tokamak is the big structure. The to tokamak, I, I call it the uh, Russian uh, practical joke. And the, the Russians invented this toroidal confinement uh, scheme. The information was leaked to the West, and uh, we've spent now billions pursuing a completely pointless technology. Pointless because energy density normalized to the size of the unit is kind of small. You need a huge unit, even if it were possible to make it and make it work. It's not known that that's possible. Even if you were possible to make it work for long periods of time, despite the uh, destructive potential of the neutrons that are being produced in huge quantities, the machine would have to be so big and so highly uh, isolated that it could be in the hands of only a very few, and the U.S. would be able to afford one or two somewhere a long ways from anywhere, um, maybe the Europeans. But it is not a practical technology. That actually is one of the precisely uh, uh, one of the reasons why it is so heavily pursued in the U.S., precisely because it can't be made to work. The thing is self-protecting. It's so huge. It costs so much money to make it in the first place. His lifetime is so short, and it's, uh, it's so big and so dangerous that it will never, uh, there will be never any proliferation issue associated with tokamaks. Conclusion of the DOE 204 report was uh, much more positive than the previous, the 1989 uh, report. The uh, Department of Energy is in a difficult uh, situation and really has a lot committed to hot fusion activity, the, the national uh, labs. Uh, I, I was um, impressed that uh, DOE at high level was willing to hear us at all. It has precipitated an extraordinary amount of interest. Just the fact that uh, we were able to walk into DOE. We were allowed to walk in uh, under our own uh, recognizance, you know, not uh, dragged in by the scruff of our neck and uh, chastised. And we were able to walk out alive and not uh, a bloody uh, pulp. That fact by itself was an extraordinary outcome. And the consequence has been a huge upswing in confidence from the commercial world, backers, money. Where government has, has uh, not come through, uh, private uh, funding uh, has been very helpful. The main thing is people are um, convinced that there's something important here and uh, they're not about to give it up. Would I encourage young scientists to get into the cold fusion field? Absolutely. And it is, if you have any aptitude in material science, um, interest in energy, it is the future. If you're not prepared for the future, you're going to be left behind. So That's great. That's great. And this, uh, this was this summer's uh, uh, assistance. What are the blocks for someone getting into this field? Ostracization. Mm. <laughs> it's very difficult for a young scientist to, to get involved with cold fusion. Why is that? Reputation risk, uh, and in the U.S. particularly, you are only as good as the number of research contracts that you can bring into your department. That's how good you are. Appetite for experimental research, for doing experiments. It's becoming expensive, dangerous, unfashionable, uh, dirty. Computers are so much cleaner and cooler. Problem is, without the experimental support, we're not going to make any progress. And what, what we need is an infusion of, of youthful energy to carry the ball. Ah. So if, if you go to one of our meetings, almost all, all the people there have gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> It's a wonderful community of individuals, 
because in fact we are so uh, unfairly chastised by by the establishment uh, there's a camaraderie and spirit within the cold fusion community which I have not experienced in any other community. They've achieved results that they didn't uh, expect. They have sufficient confidence in their own experiments and their own judgment to realize that what they measured, what they saw, is real, is important, and worth uh, standing up for. Um, and this should be how science operates. This should be how every a uh, scientist and at every level operates, but r really it's not. Mm. Science is mostly a, a corporate activity these days. There, there are lots of efforts going on. It's kind of a race now is it? to see who's going to get there first. Uh, for example, there's a group in Israel who claim that uh, they're getting close to practicality. They, the, the three uh, the three leading candidates for that would be the United States, Japan, and Italy. I'm not sure who to, who to uh, bet my money on. <laughs> <laughs> well, the group that I work most closely with, the commercial group that I work most closely with, is um, Energetics. Energetics is a U.S.-based corporation. Their research laboratories are presently in uh, Israel, in Omer. Israel, close to Ben Gurion uh, University in the Negev Desert. I'm so precise because I visited them uh, three times there. Great bunch of uh, people, great ideas. Um, typically, when we were operating uh, our old fashioned electrochemical experiments, we'd get what I would say 5 to 50 percent access, and typically 10 or 15 percent. So we just get a small fraction more than we put in. The um, star performer of the Energetics series is 2,500%. They have 25 times more heat coming out than the electrical power going in. It's an extraordinary result. And this, if you get 3 to 1 you can, at, a, at a good enough temperature, you can break even with the Kano efficiency. In, this, in other words, you can make as much electricity as you were running to put into it. You break even at 3 to 1. 10 to 1 you can start to make money. 25 to 1 you're definitely on the pathway to making uh, money, making a product that is useful and can be sold. Um, I've been trying to get a patent since 1990 and got turned down and I'm in the court of last resort now. Which is what? Oh. Supreme Court of the United States. See, but the thing is, uh, in my application, I mentioned cold fusion, and then it got stamped impossible. Okay, this this guy who never mentioned uh, cold fusion, Patterson, he got twelve patents. So, oh my gosh! So the patents are going through the system. But not if it has that. You have to sneak around to do it. <laughs>